just gotten a guitar. Uh, normally what you face uh, right after you get a guitar is a decision whether to take lessons or not to take guitar lessons. And essentially guitar lessons are pretty intensive uh, by necessity because playing the guitar is really not that easy. It takes a little bit of endeavor to uh, play, more so for some people than others. It was especially difficult for me. Um, anyway, I struggled with it, and I still do. I'm still an amateur player, um, and I'm probably not really qualified to teach, but I've had uh, numerous people who have just picked up guitars for the first time asked me to try to help them get started playing and what I try to do is I try to emphasize to them uh, the importance of rhythm and to establish rhythm I teach them a couple of quick uh, chords uh, which they can use to uh, play kind of a little song this particular chord you can see that uh, have the uh, index finger on the first fret of the second string the third string, third fret, uh, second fret is held down, and the fourth string, third fret is held down. So what you have is a, a chord that sounds like this. Now it's not too impressive, but one thing good about that chord is it's relatively mobile, movable. You can take that chord and move it up the neck and get a different sound out of it. If you move it up to the sixth fret, for instance, you get kind of an angelic sound and then uh, if you move it back down you have a natural follow through to that sound now my purpose is to teach you to hold these three strings down to hold them down hard enough to make a good sound and to slide that back and forth between those two frets. Now it's not too awful hard. It's a fairly easy chord to make actually, even for a beginner, uh, because it's kind of stacked like a staircase. Your fingers naturally kind of fit into that pattern. So anyway, you start with this chord. And you'll notice that I don't just uh, play this in a straight and steadfast and steadfast fashion. Uh, I, I am putting a little rhythm into it by varying the way that I'm touching the strings. Now the next chord I want to show, and I don't want to get hung up on uh, chord names or nomenclature or finger charts, you can look that up as you go along. But this particular chord is a C chord. It's a very common chord played in a lot of songs, of course. And uh, what I've done is I've changed that chord a little bit by placing the finger you would normally place on the third fret of the fifth string on the corresponding fret, the third fret of the sixth string, and placing your pinky on the fifth string on that third fret. That creates a more full sound, and I use that sound on the same way that I use the other chord, which is something like a C-sharp 7th, and this is just a, a heavy C, I'd call it, or almost a G chord, really. Okay, so you slide this chord up to the 3rd fret. You see, you get a pretty full sound, and it naturally progresses back like the other chord. It makes a nice sound. And it's a good one to practice your rhythm on. And you work your way back up to the sixth fret. Notice that I'm sort of lifting the strings a bit. I'm pressing down hard and then kind of coming up on them, letting loose a little bit so that I establish kind of a rhythm as I'm So the rhythm is 
is a combination of me striking the strings with my hand, but also letting up and down on my pressure on my left hand that's actually making the chords. I hope that helps a little bit. If you do that for a while, you may find yourself getting into the habit of playing that same little ditty. There's different things you can do with it. You can press down your pinky on the first string up on the, uh, I guess that's a ninth fret. And that makes a very sweet sound to the chord. You get the idea.